John here guys! Today we're talking about DJI PB updates for everyone. The DJI V2 goggles are officially now on pre-order everywhere. So I'll have a list of everywhere you can go and pre-order. Get your order in as fast as possible. This is like PlayStation 5 levels of everything selling out. So get in line if you're not already in line. If you've been waiting, now is the time. Uh, we're right about to go into Chinese New Year, so there's going to be some lead time. So you're going to want to get them as fast as possible. I have mine on pre-order already, and they should be here. So I'm just going to cover, because there's going to be a lot of new DJI PB users coming on, a quick summary of everything that we've learned so far. The DJI has seen a lot of updates. Currently, you can get a double the bit rate up to 50 megabits per second, which gives you excellent quality. That's available for all of the goggles, even the V1. Today, the V1 is no longer being sold. Now, the V2 features primarily are going to be they're going to have a video out option to go to like a cell phone and that you can plug a 6S battery directly in. So, not a lot of features. If you have the V1, it's perfectly fine. You don't absolutely have to upgrade but if you've been waiting they're no longer going to be selling the v1 so the v2s where you're going to want to start get in line at one of the links below i'm telling you now the different air units there's a lot of different video transmitter units that you can buy there is the dji air unit that you can see in this shocker tank that is this big silver thing right here there is the Cadex Vista unit that is a bit smaller they both use the same camera on both of these that is right here in this recon and there is the Nebula Pro. That is right here. This uses the same Vista video transmitter unit with a different camera. This is the Cadex Nebula Pro camera. There's also three other cameras on the market. Those are do not buy. These are the only three safe ones to buy. The Nebula Nano, the Nebula Nano V2, and the Ishin Nebula Micro are all do not buy them unless it's on like a tiny whoop. Those all use only 60 frames per second, which is half the frames per second of these other three options. And so you're gonna get a severely disconnected feel. It's gonna feel laggy. I don't recommend that. The image sensor on those is not on to par with these other solutions. So these are the three safe ones that you can buy. This one, the Nebula Pro is about 150 bucks. The Beast is 160. The air unit is 180. The advantage of the air unit, although it is bigger and heavier, is it has an SD card slot on board so you can record 1080p instead of 720p. Now, I don't really find a big difference in quality even though the resolution is a little bit better. So I am perfectly fine to record 720p DVR to my goggles. That's what I use for this channel. I don't really use the air in it. So for me, these two options of the Nebula Pro and the Vista are the two preferable options. Now, some people say, well, what about the air unit has two antennas and the other ones have one? Is there one that's better than the other? People that have tested long range have not really found an advantage of the dual antenna versus this. So it really comes down to if you want to get that 1080p recording, if you don't save the money and save the weight and get either the Vista or the Nebula Pro. The DVR goes directly to the goggles to an SD card slot right here. The DVR is excellent. Um, now let's talk about analog options. The two analog options are this is the BDI adapter right here. This allows you to plug an analog module onto the front. This is the TBS Fusion module, excellent module right there. And you also have this UR UAV style module on the side. This, these both give you the same image. This one just looks a lot cleaner and goes on the front. This one goes on the side. This is $13, this is $60. You're gonna need a module. This module is $100, but you can get one as cheap as about 25 bucks. I'll have links for all that stuff in the beginning. Now let's talk about antenna options for the DJI goggles themselves. You are going to want to have one of three options. The longest range option is going to be the big X airs, but they are giant. They hang off the sides. They make you look like Doc Brown in 1955 in back. Do you know what this means? To the future. The True RC Stubbies, which I have on here, are an upgrade to stock. They're shorter, they're smaller, they get better range, and they're just all around very, very good. Now, if you do find yourself flying directionally, if you fly closer to yourself, but around yourself at a 360, this is the best option. For a more traditional FPV setup, you're gonna wanna run two of these 
and one of these patch systems. This is the Axie HD, this is the iFlight Crystal. I have a video comparing both of these together and I have another video comparing all of the other DJI FPV antennas. Just spoiler alert, I didn't notice a big difference in one of these, so just pick whichever one looks the best to you. Prices are gonna be pretty close there. Next up is your control link. You can connect the DJI um, enabled drone to any control link out there. I am using the Jumper T18 and I'm also using Crossfire Protocol. So all of the drones I just showed you have a Crossfire receiver, you can connect to it, you don't have to use the DJI radio. Now DJI does have a similar looking radio to this. I don't find the gimbals to be comfortable, I didn't like how it felt, I didn't find the control link as reliable. Now in ideal situations, it will go fairly far, you'll have plenty of good range. I feel like the penetration is not as good as a system like Crossfire, so for me, this is the answer. But that means each drone, I have to buy a $30 Crossfire receiver and put it in there. If you use the DJI radio, you can connect directly to that Vista unit with the control link as well, saving you extra build steps and saving you $30 per drone. I'll leave a link to that. There is gonna be a game style controller coming out by DJI very, very soon, so stay tuned for that. Lastly, bind and fly options. This is the Flywoo Explore, Mwah! four inch micro long range that can go up to 35 minutes with a light Lion battery, really excellent. These run about $320 to $350, depending on which options you pick. I got the one that's loaded up to the gills with the Vista, with Crossfire on board, with a GPS and buzzer uh, lost model alarm. This is the five inch kind of big brother to that, also designed by Dave C. The Recon has all the same bells and whistles and comes into about 360 bucks. This is a bind and fly that I built. This is the massive drone, or three inch has the Vista on board. Ooh, such a great option. Has some 1207 RCM power, 6000 kV, 3S motors on board. This is quite a little ripper too. So you have plenty of options to either buy it or build it. I have plenty of build formulas, so just browse around if you wanna get some options for those. But like I said, get in line if you're not in line already. This is gonna be a huge year for DJI FPV. I would suggest go ahead and purchase the Vista units that you're going to need. Um, for the next few months because we are going into Chinese New Year. There is a drought on these units every year around the same amount of time. So we know that they're gonna be out of stock. Take only what you need. Don't hoard them, guys. Is this the year that you're switching? Have you been flying DJI FPV already? If this convinced you to get on board, were you waiting to see what was out in V2? And now it's not really that big of a change, but you're ready to go ahead and put your money down. Let me know in the comments what you are gonna do are you an anal og and you sticking with analog let me know guys thanks